Hi, this is Steve back at the Listening Post, and today I'd like to talk about Sisto Rodriguez. He's uh, better known to a lot of you as the subject of the Academy Award winning documentary Searching for Sugar Man. Uh, Sisto Rodriguez was a uh, singer songwriter based out of Detroit. Uh, his family migrated here from Mexico. And um, he was discovered by Doug Kofi playing the coffee houses of Detroit. Uh, Doug Kofi was a session musician for Motown Records. And if you're familiar with the Temptations at all, he was the uh, guitar player on two of their psychedelic tracks, uh, Cloud Nine and Ball of Confusion. Uh, Doug Kofi also has a solo album out that's worth checking out. Uh, anyway, he discovered Sisto Rodriguez in a coffee house in Detroit. and and was so overwhelmed by the music he decided he had to record this guy and put out an album. They signed him to Sussex Records and he re released his first album called Cold Fac in 1970. And here's the cover of Cold Fac. Um, this is a uh, really good album. It's um, kind of a, a, a protest album. It's uh, got a song called Sugar Man that he's very well known for, all about a uh, local drug, drug dealer in Detroit. Um, Sisto Rodriguez uh, spent most of his life living in poverty, doing kind of manual labor when he wasn't playing guitar. And uh, he was a man of the streets, and his music, very powerful uh, songs about street life and the people he encountered on the streets. Um, there's in the documentary. There's some talk about um, you know how could this great of an album be overlooked by the American public? It is a great, powerful album. Uh, there's a lot of songs on it that uh, could have been hit singles. Crucify Your Mind, the third track, and Inner City Blues, the seventh track, easily could have gotten uh, radio airplay if they had been better promoted. Um, but uh, the album came out in 1970. I, I think with more sympathetic production values, it might have been more successful. Um, also, I think by 1970, the protest movement in America was beginning to die out a little bit, even though the Vietnam War uh, would go on until 1972. I think 68 and 69 were the really big years for protest. By 1970, uh, we had the more romantic uh, singer-songwriters starting to emerge, uh, like uh, James Taylor and Judy Collins. And then you also had the big arena rock bands like uh, Led Zeppelin uh, becoming more popular and more in vogue at that time. Uh, this album may have been more successful if it had come out a few years earlier, uh, maybe in the mid-60s when uh, Bob Dylan was king. Um, but what's interesting about this album is even though it didn't capture an audience in America, um, it became quite a sensation in South Africa. Uh, the people of South Africa were living under a dictatorship uh, called apartheid. And um, as tough as apartheid was on the blacks of South Africa, it was very tough on the whites as well. Uh, uh, the ruler of that uh, country ruled with an iron fist. and. Um, it's interesting that the this album is um, somewhat more universal than some of the protest albums. Country Joe McDonald, for instance, um, protested the Vietnam War and he protested the uh, the government of the late 60s. This album, though, is more protesting social injustice, and I think that's more of a universal theme than just protesting a particular war. And I think that's why it resonated with the young people of South Africa. Um, what's interesting is that um, this album became a sensation in South Africa, even though Sussex, Sussex Records uh, folded in 1975, a label in South Africa um, called Blue Goose Records released both of his albums, Cold Fact and the second album he made, Coming From Reality, in 1971. Then they released At His Best, a greatest hits compilation that went platinum in South Africa. Everybody in South Africa knows who Sisto Rodriguez was and assumed that we all knew him as well. And uh, the, the interesting thing about the movie is um, when they finally found out in the, the mid-90s that he wasn't a household name and... Uh, nobody knew the guy or what had happened to him, uh, rumors started to circulate. And uh, 
One of them was that he had, um, because of his lack of success in the States, had committed suicide on stage. So the film uh, uh, follows the South African journalist trying to track down Sisto Rodriguez and find out what happened to him and why he disappeared. It's a bit of a detective story. I won't give it away, but it's a powerful movie, and it really talks about the power of music. Uh, this album right here helped to bring down apartheid. It became an anthem for the South African people. And uh, n putting it in that context really uh, gives it much more strength than just listening to it uh, on the surface being an album of, of, uh, of primarily acoustic uh, protest songs. Um, after the documentary won the Academy Award in 2012, Sisto Rodriguez began a resurgence. He's appeared on David Letterman, performing the track Crucify Your Mind in August of 2012. In January of 2013, he appeared on the Jay Leno Tonight Show. And he was also profiled in October 2012 on the, on the news program 60 Minutes. Well, that's all I've got. I uh, just strongly recommend you check this album out. Uh, there's certainly plenty of songs that if you perform at all, uh, there's definitely some songs here that you can cover, and it's a good listen. Once again, this is Steve at The Listening Post. Hope you enjoyed this segment, and we look forward to talking to you again soon.